What's up, guys? This is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we inspire people to be the best versions of themselves through volleyball, training, and educational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to High Q Season 4, Episode 11. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. As you can see, we got an upgrade to the studio. Finally transferred my posters from my old place to my new place and hung up some of them. We got a new shelf there that I'm gonna hang some inspirational pieces. And the coolest part about making the studio is coming in and feeling inspired by everything you see in the room. Not only does that give you an extra motivation, but it reminds me of the values that you wanna live by and also the type of work you wanna create. I never thought of how symbolic that scene was when Shimizu tossed it back to Yachi, how that's essentially her passing on the torch. And the symbolism in Haikyuu is just endless. Not only that, she tossed it in a very athletic way, which I thought was a really nice added detail to her personality and her sports background. I did notice that Takeda Sensei is getting more and more into coaching and also improving his own volleyball knowledge and skill. One common question I get from players and non-players who have the desire to want to coach and help people, they always say that, well, I'm not a very good player myself or I don't know a lot about the sport. Those things do help you become a good coach, but more importantly, the desire to become a better coach and caring about your players and caring about what you do is really the most important quality. One of the best coaches ever that never played volleyball was coach John Dunning from Stanford, and he coached five national championships, two at the University of Pacific and three at Stanford. And he's a great example of someone that truly cares about the players he works with. He's constantly analyzing how to get better, and he's passionate about what he does. It makes me appreciate Takeda Sensei even more that they do have a character who coaches but doesn't have a strong volleyball background, but is still an effective coach. I'm always motivated to make educational and inspirational content as I always talk about, but reading comments like these give me that extra boost to continue moving in this direction and helping more and more people improve their volleyball skill and to help them achieve their life goal. Now let's get this high cue party started. Man, we got that intense bass going. That's how you know it's gonna be an intense scene. Man, that echoing sound. I don't remember that being in the last episode. Is that something that they added into this one? That's a really cool effect though. Oh, the Matrix. Neo has been unlocked. That's probably one of the, my favorite scenes so far. Oh yes. Kageyama is back. I love this phrase because not only is he apologizing, but it's just such a badass way of saying, sorry to keep you waiting. I don't know. I'm sure you guys feel the same way, but I just had to pause to say that. <laughs> and of course, Hinata with this kiddish reactions. It's, uh, it's amazing that they're still only sophomores. Forget that. Oh, that's something you should be proud of. Being the shortest hitter in the starting lineup. Koiwa. Oh, that's why he didn't get a chance to see Hinata at a different training camp. Although I'm pretty sure that Hinata would have loved to be the ball boy at the national team training camp. Who's crying here? Another backstory? Yeah, that's what you get for not taking your training seriously. <laughs> Honestly, I have no sympathy for people like this. I've heard so many times where people that were better than me when I was younger on a different sports team or people we used to play volleyball with 
and then they see me four or five years later and they say, oh my gosh, you're so good now. Why, that's so unfair, how did that happen? Or why, why, why couldn't I be that good? And I'm not saying I'm the best player, that's not why I'm saying this, but I remember seeing how naturally gifted those athletes were and I remember wishing so much that I had their natural athleticism and that just motivated me to work even harder. And so when people say that to me, I want to say back, well, if you just work just as hard, you can be better too. You can be 10 times better than me, but you're lazy because you're athletic. But of course I have to be nice and I say, well, if you put in the same effort I did, you could be even better than me. And they say, oh, I know, I just don't have time. It's like, okay, well, don't complain about it. Just had to get that out there. Oh, that was sick. When you hyper focus on one player, that's a smart setter. And Kageyama is in the zone after he revealed the matrix. <laughs> the gelatin. I thought he was drinking soy milk. Yeah, sometimes when you feel like everything is in sync, you're like, I ate the right thing, I warmed up perfectly, my shoes feel good, you just feel every, like everything is perfect, you're unstoppable. Oh, Kageyama looks shorter there. Oh, was that a quick set to the left side? <laughs> of course, still yelling at him. <laughs> Uh, that animation got a little worse all of a sudden. It's interesting that the animation changes mid-episode. Like some scenes you could tell someone did the, the animation, other scenes someone else did it. this one. These banners just have the coolest phrases. Even the smallest stream can become a great river. Tsubakihara Academy Volleyball Club. I just feel like Japanese people for thousands of years have just spent so much time sitting and thinking about cool things and cool proverbs. <laughs> That's right. Good thing to say to your teams, like, we didn't come here just to play, we came here to win. And I'm sure Tsubikihara is shell-shocked from the intensity of everything that's going on and surprised by Karasuno. Those are good, simple words from the coach. Just do what you usually do. Keep it simple. Trust yourself. Trust your team. <laughs> that guy looked like he was shot by a cannon. Oh, that was a bounce ball. Classic move. It looked like the same tempo as Katasuno, so they're... Looks like they're setting at a pretty fast tempo too. Here, the proportions are a little off. I understand that Hinata is smaller, but he looks like he's holding a basketball, so this makes him look like a child. And I know a lot of people in the anime joke that he's a child, but look at the length of his torso though. It's a little too long for his frame, and if you measure out the arms and you measure the length of the hands, they probably only go to his waist, where most people's hands usually go to their groin level or past the groin. So this is where the proportions kinda they become distracting, but I think only for people that obsess over animation and illustration, like the actual drawings, because you spend so much time obsessing over these details to improve your animation that when you don't see it executed well in other people's work, it's it's hard to, to not get distracted by it. Another analogy would be if I'm a musician, it's hard for me to not pay attention when something is out of tune or slightly out of rhythm. So let me know if you guys notice these details in the comments below. Oh, 
oh, you're relaxing, but you don't know Tsuki, especially with this full approach. Oh, good read box from Tsuki. Yeah, these animations are not looking very smooth, very choppy. Wait, if you're jump higher or taller, you gotta wait on the block. Catch them on the way down. Oh, still hitting over them. <laughs> of course, Hinata gets hit in the face again. But of course, it's always a good save. <laughs> Yeah, Hinata read it, it's just either too shallow or the hitter just hit a little too deep. Oh, very deceptive on that tip. Wow, Hinata's there right already. <laughs> oh man. Man, I love this humor. Ooh, flashback to even Tanaka's tryout. I wonder why he stopped dyeing his hair. Oh, you try to dump it over like that without jumping? Oh, we get to see Nishinoya's jump set. Oh, Tsuki's step stepping in a set. Well, I'm not surprised that Tsuki is good at setting. Oh, I like this music, it's got the house. Exciting music. Oh, no problem, he's just gonna power through it. That's what Asahi does. This is why it's important for every player to work on every skill because you just never know when you're gonna bump, whether you're gonna pass, whether you're gonna serve, regardless of what your position is. And I love telling this story. In 2008, the USA men's national team was playing against Brazil and on gold medal point, that means on the opportunity to win the fourth set, Brazil won the first one, USA won the second two and they were coming back and they had a chance to win the entire match and win their first gold medal since 1988. Guess who set the gold medal point? Ryan Millar, who is a middle, and he ends up setting a beautiful set to the opposite Clay Stanley. Clay Stanley crushes it as he always does and they win the gold medal off of an assist from the middle. <laughs> Just thought your looks that got better. <laughs> you know, I, I do appreciate Tsuki because he is very detail oriented. Oh, Kageyama's pissed that he took a set. Trash talking begins. You just gotta laugh those things off. <laughs> Ooh, that was cool. I love it when we see these scenes where you see the reflection from the floor. It's just such a nice touch to the overall feel of the anime and it just makes you feel like you're right there with them. Oh, 
lucky not to get to read again. Is this a synchronized attack? Oh, back row minus temple. We haven't seen that in a minute. Oh, they screamed his name. He not the show yo. That must be a great feeling to hear name yelled over the intercom. Minus Temple, you know, the only team that I know is doing that right now is Poland with Wilfredo Leon to run that fast of a back row quick set. <laughs> That's probably the worst thing you could say to somebody, but Hinata knows how to brush off Hinata uh, Kageyama. <laughs> The walk of shame. Ooh, new player. Is this the other guy that had a good jump float? Kinoshita. Are we gonna go into Kinoshita backstory now? I love these backstories. Ooh, look at that movement. Oh, just out. Gotta bring Yamaguchi back in. Yeah, it's okay. Sometimes you if if you felt calm and you know you did everything right and it still doesn't work out, that's okay. It's more important that you felt good about the process, because the process is what makes you better. Oh, Karasuno in game point situation. Oh, then we got the best server. Kakayama's been feeling it this whole time. Oh! Maybe he hasn't been able to dial in his depth perception from the serving only as a, set, a setter. <laughs> this is one of the few episodes where, man, Hinata is just cracking me up. Uh oh, he fumbled the ball a little bit. I mean, it looks like he's nervous. That was a great little touch, though. Oh, whoa, we got his foot set back. Oh, sky ball. If you've been enjoying these reaction videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you receive exclusive perks like early access to the reaction videos and special volleyball games, monthly live Q&A sessions, my private blog, and more. Also, I just released my 12 month jump training program, the Elevate Template, and you can get 20% off with the link and code in the description box below. Now we gotta watch this fat bird fly again. Gosh, I really miss those halftime scenes where they're serving at the bottle, it's just like a new Something to look forward to, a little extra in each episode. That's intense. <laughs> that was not what I expected. Oh man. Man, he went from really nervous to really confident to ghost. Wow. They won their first official game in the national tournament. I'm assuming these are best of five games. <laughs> They're probably gonna give him another chance because he looks like he does that all the time. Yeah, pressure makes you feel more tired. You're expending so much energy mentally, but also you're you're in this fight or flight mode. And you're you're usually trying a lot harder than your normal volleyball game, so it's normal to be very tired even after the first set for a tournament this big. 
Oh, another chance. Man, what a good teammate. There's a lot of good teammates in this in this episode uh, anime in general. Which is not normal by the way. There's usually a lot of bad teammates that complain about not getting playing time and gossiping about their teammates. Very true. Man, we gotta read those wise words. It's not your teammates who won't forgive you when you mess up. It's yourself. So true. Another wise words from a famous coach, Human Kutchin. I heard the story from Reed Pretty, who is part of the 2008 gold medal team for the USA men's national team. He used to be really hard on himself. And just like every great player, right? You expect yourself to be great all the time. Not out of a form of entitlement, but just simply because you have very, very high expectations for yourself. And it would get to the point where he would get down on himself, he would get emotional and sad, and he would bring the team down. And the coach at the time, Hugh McCutcheon, would say, why are you being so selfish? The game's not about you. It doesn't matter if you mess up, just move on and be better. But you can't let your mistakes affect other people in an emotional way. So getting over it is not just moving on for yourself, but also for the sake of your teammates, because if you have bad body language and bad energy, more importantly, it affects the team. So you have to learn how to forgive yourself to be able to move forward. Oh, he's gonna kill it this time. This is especially difficult from Oh, they brought the good animation back. That was amazing. This is really difficult to deal with. I'm going to rewatch that Skyball scene again after this one because I just want to see what happens. So hard to see. What a great job by the coach to have faith in his players. All right, we gotta watch that Skyball animation again. That was amazing. I think I know why the animation was a little worse in some moments, because they're probably saving the best frames and, and animation for these scenes. Oh, I love that slow-mo and then that smoke just swirling around the ball. And then when Daichi lifts up his head, the, the sweat comes off his chin. So this is difficult because it's hard to gauge the depth perception and also the ball is falling a lot faster at an angle you're not used to. Oh man, whoever does those smoke and sweat animations, <laughs> I wonder if they have a separate animator just for that. They do an excellent job. But even when you do the slow-mo, I mean, you have to animate so many frames just to move that slowly in a short period of time. That's interesting how the ceiling is working against Karasuno, but to this guy, it's working towards his advantage. Oh, then he gets another one. Oh, it's going to cause a miscommunication. Yes, you have too much time to think. Unfortunately, most ceilings aren't high enough to do this. Oh, is he gonna come in? Forcing a free ball and then a crush. Wow, three points in a row. Come back. <laughs> oh, that's Kageyama learning how to communicate to his team in a productive way. Hey, did you say Moikai? Moipo. Moipo. Is that a different way of saying it? Or am I just messing up my Japanese anime language? Oh, that's a different look from Karasuno. They are determined. They are getting better with each serve, though. Oh, they skyballed to the wrong guy. Oh, 
Actually, Nishinoya should have taken that ball to begin with, because Skyball, you have a lot of time to react. So he ha should have taken all those. Oh, man. These teammates, man, I want these teammates on my team. They're always saying some great words. 80%. I don't know if you want to serve 80% because you end up hitting into the net. Ooh, but it ends up hitting out. Okay, maybe that was his way of dealing with the the depth perception. <laughs> These mini conversations in between the teams are so funny. Ooh, come on, Asahi. Asha! Oh, dump. Anisha knows that. No, nobody's there. This is a good team. I'm so used to so many of the other teams making some silly mistakes. But you forget that you are at the national tournament. Different level team. <laughs> so much is communicated with your eyes midway. <laughs> what was that? Some ancient volleyball technique there? <laughs> I gotta see that again. This scene was probably meant to be serious, but that's like the death touch. If you strike it on the right part of someone's chin, they're gonna die. <laughs> oh man, so close. So, so intense. Is he going to cry again? Suga! It's been so long since we've seen you play. Oh, what an honor for him to actually experience Nationals. I mean, he's he's part of the reason why this team has gotten so good. Oh, I'm so happy for Suga. He's the spot server. Does this mean that Kageyama's going to hit? Oh, standing float. Confusion on the pass. Are they gonna force a free ball to be sent over? Oh, good dig. Oh, okay. Tanaka's been working on that, that sharp angle. That's a good rally. No, Kageyama's not hitting. Tsuga's just playing defense and serving. Oh, good save, Tsuga! Oh, he's seen these players for three seasons, so he's been tracking all their tendencies. Is this guy gonna cry? Cry! Oh no, that was a flashback from Karasuno. Oh, is he gonna finish the play? No, he goes, he becomes a decoy for Asai's back row attack. Oh, that was sick. We gotta rewind that. I had to freeze frame it here to really emphasize the importance of the decoy. So you see how number one and 10, the left and right side blockers are a little bit higher than number eight. And it's because number eight jumped early to try to stop Hinata. But when you commit to Hinata, you're gonna be on your way down from the block, which leaves a small opening for Asahi to hit right over him. That is the beauty of a perfectly executed Bic attack. We call it a Bic in America because it's short for back row quick. Round two perfection. Did Karasuno just win the second set? Wow. And Suga came in just for a critical moment. Okay, that was an appropriate time to end. I was afraid they were going to end it right when Suga was going to serve and we wouldn't be able to see anything, but they did not tease us.
Here's my immediate thoughts on episode 11. This was action packed. Not only did you have the story, a little bit of backstory, but you had the evolution from all the characters. Hinata came in and showed up big with some of his big reads. Even though he dug it off of his head, he still got the ball up and that's what's most important. And when you do get a silly dig like off your shoulder or off your elbow or even off your foot, especially if you win the point, don't act entitled like, oh, we don't deserve that point. A point's a point and the reality is you were in the right position and remember that you have to work hard for your luck. Luck just doesn't come to anybody. You have to position yourself to be lucky. So if Hinata didn't read and work hard in getting his body in the right position, he would have never had the chance to be lucky and dig the ball with his face. It was really cool to actually see a sky ball in this anime. And so far, Haikyuu has shown such a wide variety of almost everything you're gonna see in volleyball. Foot digs, rolling dives, back row quicks, libero settings, slide attacks, and so on. And I didn't realize that they didn't show the sky ball. And that's because people don't really do it indoors anymore but it's cool to still include that as part of the volleyball experience. I'm so happy for Tsuka. He's been such a great team supporter this entire time, and you can see how there is no substitute for experience. He might not be the best setter on the team or the best at anything, but when he's asked to do something, he will do it. He will serve the right spot, and you saw his ability to read the defense, and that just comes with experience. I can't wait to see what other impact he's gonna have throughout this entire match. Don't forget to watch all my other Haikyuu reaction videos with this playlist right here. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna like this video right here.